All right, here we go. I'm Mr. Brust. Welcome to Unit 1B. Let's get this thing rocking and rolling here. So we're going to do rational functions, which is just building off of uh, Mr. Kelly in 1A doing polynomials. All this is, if you read the definition, is we're going to take two polynomials and we're going to stack them. So when you take a polynomial like the some kind of function, divide it by maybe the g of x, that is a rational function. And when you just have the division of the two polynomials, the key to this is the denominator cannot equal zero. You cannot divide by zero, so we're going to have to be real careful with that. And that's going to be kind of like our whole section to start things off with. So just some examples. You could take any polynomial. Maybe your favorite polynomial is a quadratic. Love them quadratics. So I just made one up here. That's a polynomial. Boom. I'm going to divide it by another polynomial. Let's just do a line here. I'm feeling like a line. All of a sudden, that is a rational function. So let's go ahead and call that a function. I'll call this one the f of x. It doesn't matter. So anytime you take two polynomials and divide them, there's an example of one. Um, the most basic chill one that you can do, kind of like the parent function here, is if you just take 1, which is a polynomial, it's okay to be a constant, divided by x. That's the most basic one. I also call this the Mr. Kelly function because it's so basic. Um, that is a rational function. So it's okay to be a constant. You don't have to have a variable in there. So let's get rolling. I think it's just better just to do these things. So what are we looking at this? We're going to be looking at the domain of these rational functions. Well, it turns out we're going to make some crazy graphs. So this is pretty cool. This is the graph of the first f of x right there. Uh, I got a graph over here for you. And if I look at this, where are their issues? Well, I can't divide by zero. I know I can't do that. It's impossible. Can't divide by zero. So all you really have to do is say, hey, man, I cannot divide by zero. So really, it's just can you solve this equation here? So yeah, what would be the problem? You might be able to do this, do this in your head. Just some, subtract 12, divide by 3. And what happens here? x really can't be what? negative four. So maybe you saw that right off the bat, but we're saying, hey, x is not allowed to be this number here. So when you can see that on the graph, if you go over to x is negative four, look at this. Well, we've got this weird like break in the graph here. See how there's no red line there? There's no function there because you can't divide by zero. So that's what's causing these weird things to happen. So when I want to write the domain of this, I'm going to say, okay, it can be any number less than negative four. So I could say any number less than negative four and I can be any number bigger than negative 4. So I can do something like this. Well, that's great, uh, but I want to go into interval notation. So I'm going to use interval notation for this chapter. You're more than welcome to use inequalities. You could even say x doesn't equal negative 4. But I like to say, hey, if I'm talking domain, I'm going to start way out here at negative infinity. So that's the smallest x possible. I can be anything, see, follow them on the graph, whoosh, until I hit that negative 4. So until I hit negative 4, and it's going to be an open bracket. I'm not going to include negative 4 in my answer, so he's got to be an open bracket. Just like infinity. You can't ever include infinity. Uh, it's not a number, so you can't include it. But then what can I do? Well, I can do the other interval here from negative 4 to infinity. So I think it's a little smoother, a little cleaner uh, to use the, the interval notation here. So that's what I'm going to kind of use. And that shows it can be everything on the graph except negative 4. You could have said all real numbers, so x doesn't equal negative 4 as well. That's totally legit. That's the same thing. Awesome. So we saw it with the uh, equation. We saw it with the picture. What if I don't give you the picture, though? So now we're looking at the g of x. I give you this. Again, it's the same thing. I'm just saying, listen, I can't divide by 0. We know that's a problem. Boom. So solve this one. I've got a quadratic, so I'm just going to factor it. So real quick, what factors to what? Negative 24. Adds or subtracts to 2. I'm looking at what? 6 and 4. So minus 6 plus 4. And then, so if I factor that, what are my solutions? So again, we're going to do super chill factoring. We're not going to go crazy with this. Um, and when I solve this, I'm going to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to have a problem with if x is 6 and if x is negative 4. These are the ones that will give me 0 on the bottom. So this is where it can't be. And again, um, I don't have a picture to look at. That's OK. Um, so I'm just going to go straight to the domain. It can be anything from negative infinity to where? to that negative 4. And we always kind of go left or right here. And really, I got kind of lazy in the last one. We should say that it's the union of. So I'm going to say, OK, it's that interval in conjunction with this interval from negative 4 to where? Negative 4 to 6. Everything in there is cool. And then union, boom, from 6 to infinity. So this one is kind of lengthy here. That does take a little bit of writing to write all that out when we're really just saying it can't be 6 or negative 4 because that's divided by 0. But I kind of like getting the flow of this interval notation. Awesome. So maybe I'll give you an equation. What if I just give you a graph? 
So here I don't have any equation type it in. I can just kind of see, ooh, I think there's going to be a problem right here. It looks like there's a problem. It's a pretty solid sound effect there when you draw on these little dotted lines. That looks problematic. And I think there's another one over here, yeah? That looks problematic. So here we're just going to go and say, these are. we're going to talk about these are called asymptotes. We're going to talk about them coming up. But for now, if it looks like it is one, we're going to say, oh, yeah, that's going to be a problem. So we're going to do the same thing. I see x can be everything from negative infinity to negative 2. And maybe you're working ahead here. You can be faster than me. I'm writing kind of slow. And then see this interval where it's defined again. So I've got, I'm cool here from negative 2 to where was that place? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm making the functions all cool there. And then I have the last little chunk here from 5 to infinity. All of these open brackets not going to include those points. That's where I have the red function going through everything like that. Super cool. We are crushing this. I think this is going to be a good section. So let's talk about end behavior. I know you just got done doing end behavior polynomials, but what's going to happen at the end of these things? So here's the equation. In this case, to start off with, we're really going to use this picture. And basically, I'm going to come over here and say, hey, what's happening uh, as the limit as x approaches infinity? So as x gets infinitely large, what's going on? And then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing to the left side. The limit as x gets infinitely small, what's going on? So maybe I'll come over here and write it up formally here. So let's start with the negative direction. So as x gets inf as x goes really super negative of my function, where's the graph going? Ah, where's he going? Well, if you follow this trend, he is going down, down, down. This will actually go to negative infinity. So this is negative infinity right here. That's slowly going down. It's going to go down forever. Uh, so we're good there. And then the other one, as I go to the right, I'm going to say the limit as x gets infinitely large. So as x gets super big, what's my function doing? Bigger and bigger and bigger. You can see the y value is also getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's going to be to infinity. Awesome. All right, let's take a look at some other things that can happen here. So um, this is the great verbiage that we're going to use with this. As x is, you know, getting infinitely large, we're going to use this. As x increases without bound, what is the g of x doing? So here's an equation here. So I can find domain algebraically, but this I'm going to kind of need the graph. In this case, we're going to use the graphing calculator. So go ahead and fire that up in there, whatever you got. We can take a look at this uh, bad boy right here. Just remember, use parentheses. It's the whole top. Um, being divided by the whole bottom. So 4x minus 1 is my polynomial on top. The polynomial bottom also needs parentheses, so it's going to be, what, x squared minus 2x minus 24. And let's go ahead and see. We could take a look at that graph. Oh, my goodness. Look at that thing. That's so awesome. And all I care about, I don't really care about what's going on here in the middle. I just care about what's happening at the end. So the idea is here, see how x is getting uh, increasing without bound? It's getting larger, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. You go 100,000, a million. But go to your table. So we'll go to our table. So hit second graph in blue, it's table. A lot of times it defaults to this, but go to table set. Up here above window, hit second window is the table set. And we're going to take our independent variable and change it to ask. So I don't want the automatic. If you leave it as a default, it just feeds it. We're going to go ahead and ask it what we want. So if I type in 10, it's going to tell me, 0.694. What happens when I type in 100? Oh, not 1,000, Mr. Brust. 100. There it is. Oh, 0 0.0408. Okay, so let's go a little bit bigger here to maybe 1,000. So we're at 100. There's 1,000. We get 0 0.004. And then let's go ahead and bump this all the way up to 10,000. So we're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can see what the y values are doing, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, remember, that scientific notation, you can see the full number down here. When it gives you the E, it's times 10 to the negative 4. So let's, I put the first two in. Let's fill the rest of these bad boys in. We've got 0 0.004. So excellent. So as X increases without bound, as X is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, what are these guys going? They are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. They're getting so small that they're pretty much 0. I mean, 4 times 10 to the negative 4 is super small. So we can keep that. If we want to look farther, we can go up to 100,000 or um, a, you know, million, billion, whatever you can fit in there would be great. So this function, oop, it's not the f of x, it's the g of x. So as x gets infinitely large or increases without bound, it's going towards zero. So we're going to use our calculator uh, to, to check it out. We're actually going to use the table of values to prove that. Could you have looked at the uh, graph? I mean, yeah, I think you could have looked at the graph here. It gives you an idea. Let's make sure that it looks like it's heading that way. But you see it coming down again, smaller, smaller, smaller. So you can kind of see that, but sometimes... 
Uh, we can't see what's going on without changing our window, and we're going to prove it with the table. So how do we do it in the other direction? So what about this? Let's go ahead and prove what's happening. Basically, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to go negative. And you don't have to use 10, 100, 1,000. I just kind of made up some numbers to show it getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And here we are at a negative 1,000. Oh, almost too much there. <laughs> too big of a jump. And then negative 10,000. Oh, my goodness. I get too far. I get too excited here. So negative 10,000. And it's really looking kind of similar here. Here are the numbers right here. Um, are these the exact same number? They are because I typed it in wrong. How about that? Let's do negative 100. Zeros. There we go. Okay. Uh, sometimes it'll round them. They look like the same number. But when you scroll on them, you can actually see the full actual number. Very good. So let's add those to the table. And then let's wrap this up. So now I'm getting infinitely small or I'm decreasing without bound. I'm going towards that negative infinity. And you can see the trend. And if you didn't believe me, you can keep going to add, you know, negative a billion, trillion, gazillion, whatever you want to go towards. But I can tell 0 0.4, negative 0.4 to negative 0.039 to negative 0 0.004 to the 0.000, a lot of O's there. We're getting to zero. We're approaching zero right there. That was a rough looking zero. Let's try that again. We're getting that zero right there. Awesome. So we got to use tables to prove where is the limit as I approach infinity in both directions. Excellent. So let's take a look at one more if I have the graph right here. So what's kind of happening here? So as I look to infinity, well, what is really happening here? You're getting this dotted line here. So I, before we were looking at domain with those vertical asymptotes, now we're going to start this idea of these horizontal asymptotes. So see how it's getting closer and closer and closer to a certain spot? So as I go to the left, if I decrease without bound, or as the x approaches negative infinity, what's going on over here? So this is a, a f of x function. So when I look to the left, what am I, what's the y value as I get infinitely small? It looks like it's approaching, what is that, negative 2? Awesome. And in this case, we got to check it to the right as well. So we're going to look at as x gets large. So we're looking to the left and to the right, or infinity and negative infinity. And again, in this case, it's the same number. It is possible they go to different spots. Um, maybe later on that's going to happen. But right there, we've got this horizontal asymptote. Awesome. That is it. This is the formal definition of that horizontal asymptote. So if you want to have what is a horizontal asymptote, well, it can happen in either direction. And they don't have to match. But for, I think a lot of these are going to match for us. As x goes to the, remember, this is goes to the left, you're approaching some b value. So basically, if I drew a line here, this would be y equals b. I don't know what it is. We just got to get used to this generic uh, kind of constant. It's some number. And so, yes, as I go that way, the equation, I don't know where it's happening. In fact, it can even cross it. It can do crazy things. Maybe it's doing this. Maybe it crosses it and then levels out. Totally cool. And we're going to talk more about horizontal asymptotes. Or maybe it's doing it to the right. Maybe it didn't cross it and just did something like this. Maybe there's nothing even in the middle. Who knows? Maybe it's connected. I don't really care about the middle. I just care about what's happening as I go to the right and to the left. So there's a ger generic notation. That's the section. Good luck on the practice and the mastery check. Peace out.